Hey, welcome back. I wanted to talk to you today about a subject that I think all men should study, but more importantly, men who are going through separation or divorce, because I think it's going to help them overcome a lot of the emotional traumas that, uh, that they're going to experience and are experiencing. And that subject, I'll, and the subject I want to talk about is Stoicism, which was one of a number of philosophical schools that emerged in Athens during the third century BC. Its founder was Zeno of Citium, who was a, a Phoenician merchant and trader who, while finding himself shipwrecked in Athens, decided to study under some of the great masters, and in doing so developed his own school of philosophy. Like several of the Greek schools of philosophy, it relied on the application of logic as, uh, as its main foundation uh, for its principles. Logic basically consists in the analysis and the appraisal of arguments to determine whether a proposition should be accepted or rejected. Stoicism can most easily be described as a system of ethics and personal development in which the experience of happiness or eudaimonia is best achieved through calm acceptance of circumstances rather than allowing yourself to be subject to the turbulent forces of emotional reaction. The reason for this is somewhat fatalistic, but it's an acceptance that the universe unfolds the way it does due to a, a natural order, and that uh, the turbulent emotions that we experience are based on both an ignorance of nature as well as a failure to allow, align ourselves with the way that nature works. Today, the meaning of the word stoics be usually been subverted into meaning that someone is either unemotional or uh, indifferent to pain. But that's not strictly true. Stoicism teaches the development of self-control and fortitude as a means of overcoming destructive emotions. The intention is to develop clear judgment and an inner calm rather than an apathy to the things that are going on around you. Basically, Stoicism is about understanding that unexpected and bad things happen and that you need to learn to be okay with that anyway. So, two central concepts in Stoicism are that one must study nature in order to understand how it works and one must also practice self-control in order to bring yourself into alignment with nature because you can't control what happens in the external world, but you can control what happens in the internal world. Stoics avoided the anxiety of trying to create an ideal world and instead accepted the world and its randomness as it is and focused all their attention on creating an ideal version of themselves because only in this way could the world ultimately change for the better. This process involved not just reading and study, but also contemplation or meditation on all aspects of your character, events that have occurred and things that may occur in the future. Stoics were famous for meditating upon the fragile nature of life and on mortality as a reminder to keep their behavior in check. Every morning, Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest of Roman emperors, would take a few minutes out of his routine and practice a technique called negative visualization, in which he would imagine all the possible things that might go wrong with today and view his reaction to them and how he might best solve those problems. And then he would just go about his day and not think of it again. If something bad would happen, he was already conditioned to respond to it in the most appropriate manner and would generally solve those problems in a far less emotional way. This kind of visualization is really lacking in the modern kinds of personal development we see today where people only really focus on what they want and then they fall into despair when life or today's events don't turn out that way. Part of the mental training that Stoics conducted was an emphasis on the cultivation of the four cardinal virtues. Wisdom, the ability to make the best decisions in complex circumstances by calmly analyzing and appreciating all the evidence without bias. Courage, having the integrity to take action and bear the challenges of life. Justice, recognizing the humanity in all people and treating them fairly. And temperance, 
the exercise of moderation in all things. So let's have a look at a couple of scenarios where stoicism might help you if you're a man dealing with separation, divorce and family matters. Let's start with wisdom. You've probably often come across the cliche that men can never seem to fathom what a woman wants, what she means or how she thinks. This is all the more significant when trying to make sense of, say, a marriage breakdown. But instead of just accepting it or being condescending about PMS, menopause, hormones or jealousy, maybe studying the biology of primates, dominance hierarchies, hypergamy, or even more broader subjects like sociology, culture, individual liberty, power, meaning, status, and security would help you understand women, yourself, and even the broader society you live in. It'd help you make decisions that best serve your future and prevent your exploitation. Jim Rohn once said that education helps you see a future you couldn't see before. If that's true, then a separated man whose whole world has collapsed around him won't have the perspective or the tools to see beyond his current circumstances and will definitely need to educate himself in a number of areas in order to progress more calmly into the future. Wisdom certainly will give him the calmness that he needs. How about courage? Knowing the trajectory of your relationship, business or health is one thing. But having the courage to act in order to make positive changes in the long-term outcome, or the big picture if you will, despite short-term pain, even agony, is important. Statistics suggest to us that many men would rather kill themselves than face the uncertainty of a different future to the one they've pinned all their hopes on and seen slip through their fingers. Seneca, the famous Roman author, once wrote that sometimes even to choose to live is an act of courage. To walk away from a toxic relationship and bear the consequences in the hope that you can manufacture a better future takes a level of courage that's not natural for most people. It must be cultivated through study, contemplation and visualization. The practice of justice is also much more relevant than you think. In the ancient world, the Stoics were famous for their advocating kindness to slaves and to animals, when the usual practice was to merely treat them as property. To a man undergoing divorce, it's the understanding that we're all on our own journey, that while we should continually protect ourselves from exploitation, we should work to avoid the bitterness that might arise out of doing so. Furthermore, we also have to recognise that we really only bear 50% of the responsibility for the failed relationship, and only 50% of the consequences to our children's morale, development, education and emotional well-being. Men often burden themselves with guilt about how their children will cope with divorce and yet as the more disciplinarian of the two parents, they'll usually see their teenage children choosing the soft option of living with their mother, showing little sympathy, day-to-day -day contact or interest in their father and his welfare despite him still financing virtually every aspect of their day-to-day -day life. You need to cut yourself some slack because you need to accept that it's in the nature of teenagers to take the easy option. If they choose not to study and their mother doesn't police it, you need to learn to be okay with that. If they choose not to call you or visit you or want to stay with you, you need to learn to be okay with that too. And as much as you want to try and prevent them from experiencing all the consequences of those poor decisions, someone once said, you shouldn't ever deprive your children of the privilege of struggling. And I think what they meant by that was, you can't prevent them from the consequences of their choices. Sometimes it's just out of your hands. And finally, let's talk briefly about temperance. The Stoics believed that excess of any kind deformed the very soul. Separated and divorced men sometimes feel they need to find an outlet for the frustration uh, and the anxiety that they experience during divorce. So they start to engage in overconsumption of alcohol, taking drugs, casual sex or other dangerous pursuits. These activities will always make it harder for you to centre yourself again and focus on achieving and activating those things that will 
give you the life that you really want. The practice of moderation and self-discipline are ways for you to keep yourself accountable to achieving all of those goals. They will give you the kind of energy that you need and the clarity to get back on track when things are not going the right way. So there you have it, a brief introduction to the philosophy of Stoicism. I think it's an area that most men will benefit from. As a divorced father, I certainly did, and I warmly encourage you to do as much reading on the subject as you can. Please leave your comments in the section below, but even better, leave your favorite Stoic quotation, and uh, we can all get a little bit more out of it. Keep reading, keep researching, walk tall, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.